Let's hear now from the province's Green Party leader. Peter Bevan Baker joins me now from Charlottetown. Mr. Bevan Baker, thanks for your time. Good to see you. Uh, nice to see you too. Thanks, Andrew. Now, you achieved what no Green Party had ever done in a federal or provincial election. You won nearly a third of the seats in the Legislative Assembly. So when you look back, what made this campaign so different from the rest? Well, I think we've had four years of actually being in the legislature myself and I was joined a couple of years ago by a caucus mate Hannah Bell who was elected in a by-election. So we had time to demonstrate to Islanders that the Green Party is far more than a single issue advocacy party, that we um, can speak knowledgeably and competently on all political issues. And like everywhere else, I think the electorate is looking for something beyond conventional politics and unimaginative politicians. And here on Prince Edward Island, um, that sort of disillusionment found a home in the Island Green Party. And I think that's largely the story here. Uh, I, you know, we, we, it was the right time and the right place. So do you think uh, that can translate to the federal Green Party? Because now we're obviously looking at a federal campaign yeah. uh, later this year. Do those elements of your campaign translate uh, to the full campaign across Canada that we're going to see in a few months? I think that's absolutely possible. Um, there's an intimacy to island politics where, um, you know, everybody knows everybody else. And so it's actually easier for a new entity like the Green Party. I mean, we just elected our first member four years ago. So in one election cycle to go from that to occupying, you know, a third of the seats in the House is, is something which is thinkable here. Year. On a national scale, I think there will be some challenges for the Green Party because of the scale of the country, of course, and the complexity of running a, a campaign from coast to coast to coast. Having said that, I think the same appetite that exists here uh, for change and for a different kind of politics is, is present everywhere in Canada, in every province. So I think if the Green Party can present itself as a credible and comfortable alternative as we have done here for the last four years, I think there's a real chance that it could be a breakthrough election for the Green Party nationally. Uh, and uh, looking at the quality of candidates that are being put forward at the federal level, I, I absolutely believe it's a possibility. Well, let, let's look at what comes next in your province. You know, PEI hasn't seen a minority parliament in a very long time, so you're in some uncharted waters. Do you anticipate being the next leader of the opposition and the Conservatives having that first shot at forming a government? Yeah, well, we're, no, we're in that grey zone constitutionally where no party has a majority and uh, one of the caucuses uh, has to, has to get, gain the confidence of the House. Um, so typically, you know, the, the, the Liberals who are now in third place are really not in a position to do that, particularly now that their leader did not rewind his seat. So I think in the eyes of Islanders, the party with most seats is uh, in, in the pole position, if you like. So I think uh, it's up to Danny King, the leader of the PCs, to uh, persuade the lieutenant governor here that he can gain the confidence of the House. Now, he'll have to do that, of course, by entering into some sort of arrangement, formal or informal, with one of the other caucuses. And uh, I can say that we have not had formal talks yet. Denny and I have, have met as we've gone in and out of interviews on a couple of occasions today, uh, but we haven't actually entered into any formal uh, discussions yet. But um, I think that's what will happen. Um, how that will end up, I have no idea whether it will be a formal coalition or a supply and confidence agreement or just an issue by issue arrangement. Um, that remains to be seen. So regardless of uh, what may come in terms of uh, the mechanics of forming the next government, um, mm -hmm. we do know that PEI's carbon levy came into place earlier this month. Now, your platform called for higher gas taxes to reduce emissions beyond um, what the Liberal government had agreed to. Is that a policy that's a must-have for the Green Party when it comes to supporting a, a minority Conservative government? Do you think... Uh, that's going to be a potential uh, flashpoint as you try to navigate through a new minority government. I think it's possible. Um, but just to be clear, um, the, the federal backstop was applied to Prince Edward Island here and gas tax went up by 4.2 cents, I think it was, uh, as a result of the $20 uh, per 100, ton, 100 tons of, of carbon dioxide. So that 
that was put in place by the federal government. What our provincial government did was to rebate three quarters of that to islanders. That's the bit I have a problem with. We're not going to raise taxes beyond what the federal government has mandated, but we're just, we feel that a better option is to rebate that money directly to islanders so they can make some choices about what they do. I mean, I'm getting a little bit down in, in the weeds here, um, but uh, I, I'm not sure whether that will be a deal breaker the, uh, the current arrangement between the provincial government and the federal government is for two years. And of course, we could have a totally different federal government come October who may completely renege on, on, the, on the current uh, carbon arrangement across country. So um, I, I'm not sure whether that will play actually a big role in the negotiations. And finally, Mr. Bevan Baker, in the time we have left, your campaign came to a very tragic end a few days ago with the death of your colleague, Joss Underhay, and his son. Tell me about what uh, Josh meant to you and your party and now how, uh, you know, you as a party leader uh, and your caucus, how you now go forward uh, in his memory. Yeah, I mean, it, an event like that would be tragic at any time. But, you know, as you're reaching the climax of a campaign in a, a seat that Josh was absolutely competitive in, uh, it, it was it was. Uh, it was beyond words, actually, and particularly to hold hold those two contradictory emotions. You know, the the excitement of, of a campaign coming to an end, with the just utter devastation of uh, of losing a close friend and and his little boy. It it, it made me I, I couldn't operate for a couple of days. Actually, I couldn't think of anything else. I certainly couldn't I couldn't be active in a campaign. And I think I speak for so many other Green Party members who were so close to Josh. He was a, he was an extraordinary man. You know, he had an electric energy about him and did everything with such commitment and a, and a man of immense integrity. You know, he, he absolutely walked his talk in a way that very few human beings do. And it's a huge loss, you know, of course, to his family, um, most of all, but to the Green Party family here and, and all of the many people he touched. So it was, it, it, it just, it was enormously difficult, and I'm still struggling. All right. Peter Bevan Baker is the leader of Prince Edward Island's Green Party. Thanks for your time today. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Andrew.